Okay, hello everybody. <laughs> welcome to this masterclass and welcome to, it is called She Goals because you will see why. I am so freaking excited for this class right now. Like my energy is like just going and going and going like a million miles per hour at the moment. So yeah, <laughs> I'm super excited for this masterclass right now. I am so excited for all of the things that we are going to talk about tonight. I have so much to talk to you about. And I really just felt like it was time, you know, like it was time for a formal discussion. It was time for us to have a talk. Uh, this is being recorded. So you will be able to come back and watch this, although I'm not sure if I will make it available for like ever, you know what I mean? So um, I also suggest having a notebook. You won't need it through like the whole thing. So try to pay attention and absorb all this as much as you can. And you can always come back and, and take notes. Uh, we will also be doing, I will be answering uh, questions like towards the end of the uh, end of the masterclass. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it. I hope that you guys are doing well tonight. If you would like to say hi in the chat and communicate, thank you so much, Amber. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. I hope you guys are doing well. Okay, so let me minimize my screen really quick. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm like all over the place. So, okay. So welcome to She Goals. So I wanna start off by saying that not everybody may be ready for this kind of discussion, okay? Because if I would have heard this kind of discussion like maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, I may have agreed with some things, but I may have not been like ready, ready for it. You know what I mean? And so I wanna preface this by saying that uh, you know, not everybody, this may not be for everybody and that is 100% okay. Take whatever resonates with your soul and run with that shit, baby. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't right now. And that is 100% okay. Like I am not the end all be all. I do not know everything there is to know. I do know a lot though. I have experienced a lot in my time here, uh, but I am not the end all be all. And I always want you to think for yourselves. That is the most important thing to me because freedom and individuality is very important to me. Okay. I have uh, a lot of Leo and Aquarius in my chart. And so freedom and individuality is very important to me. And so I always want you to think for yourself because you are the one living your life. You are the one writing your story. You are the one, you know, up in here, you know, like you, you are the one living your life. So I always want you to do what you feel is best for you. So with that being said, uh, who this is for, you will know. Like if this is for you, you will know that this is for you. So, and I also wanted to preface this by saying, I will also be uh, doing like a, a special talking about something special at the end. Uh, so you do not have to stay for that if you don't want to, it's completely your choice. Uh, but I just wanted to preface this by saying that as well. So I felt like I wanted to have a true and like really raw, just like real conversation about personal power, manifestation, the power of feminine energy, true womanhood, and stepping into a new era, like colliding into your future self, right? Ending 2022 with a bang and going into 2023 with this like energy that is unstoppable, right? Where you look back on your year and you're like, whoa, right? Because What's really interesting to me is that something interesting always happens, like as we move into a new year, right? We move into a new year every year and we have all these hopes, all these dreams, all these desires, all these aspirations, you know, <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about desires and aspirations and all of that in this uh, class too. But, and then what happens like a few months into the year, sometimes not even that we're like, oh, this is not good anymore. <laughs> right. I think I'm just gonna, you know, resort back to how I was before, or I kind of, we kind of lose our mojo, right. We kind of lose that zest. We kind of lose that energy. Right. And this is why like the beginning of the year, like the gyms are full and there's like memberships, like sold out and all this and that. And then by like February, March, like 
that's done, right? Like, so this is what I kind of wanted to talk about because why do we do this, right? We do this for like a lot of reasons, but we all somewhat do this where we ha have all these like high hopes for ourselves, all these high hopes for our lives, all these high hopes for what we want to create. There is something magical about the energy of the new year, right? Like there is something magical. It really does feel like an opportunity to step into something new. And this is, this really goes into manifestation because whenever there are multiple people believing in the same thing or thinking the same thing in that same energy, that energy is contagious, whether it's real or not, you know, like, cause really technically the calendar calendar years are like, not, <laughs> not very accurate. Right. But it, there's something still about that energy because I know I feel it, you know, I feel it when I step into that new year and it's like, yes, I am. It's like a new world opens. It is a chance to completely like, you know, let go of the past and move towards the future. And I'm like ready to fucking go. Right. But it doesn't always last. Right. Like it doesn't always last. Like we, we get a few months into it and then we're like, Ooh, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not, you know, and then we end up ending the year and we're like, what happened? Like, what happened? Why did I not, like, I started off strong where I started the year feeling great, but like, what happened? Why did I not accomplish what I set out to accomplish? What really happened? And that is what this class is so much about. It's about a lot of different things. Okay. It's not just about one thing, but you will see it's very interesting, but I feel like we get into this energy and then we lose it. And something happens where it just kind of dissipates. And then by the end of the year, we're like, what happened? Or we don't even think about that. And we're just like, I don't care what happened. I'm moving on to the next year. 2023 is my year. And then 2023 will pass and it'll be like, ooh, what happened? I don't know, but I'm moving on to the next year. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. And the next thing we know, we're like, what's happening? <laughs> you know, like, why didn't I not create the things I wanted to create or what happened? Or maybe it's not that deep for you. Maybe this year you did create some really amazing things and that's okay too, because you will still relate to this masterclass. But because I know I created some amazing things, I had some amazing highs and some shitty lows, you know, and, but I've learned a lot through all of it. So that's kind of how I wanted to start this because so often, you know, there is this energy of this like new year that we're coming up upon, but we're not quite done with this year yet. And so I felt like this was the perfect time to kind of like have this discussion and have like a real conversation about this. So I want us to get real with ourselves. Okay. In this masterclass and you will love it. Okay. Like it, it may not feel good initially and you may kind of not like it initial initially, like getting real with ourselves doesn't always feel good initially. Right. But by the end of it, it's like, Ooh, you know, like I, I got this, like, it really takes us getting real with ourselves to actually re to, to, to actually commit to some kind of change to actually start some kind of transformation. Right. So I have downloaded and experienced some major lessons this year. Okay. I'm sure a lot of you guys have too. So, uh, so many lessons on masculine and feminine energies and how we live in this unbalanced world. Like we're either in our shadow feminine and being dependent, needy, lazy, and kind of desperate or avoidant, or we're constantly trying to fill this void where nothing is ever enough. Uh, or we are in our unbalanced masculine where we are just pushing and pushing and hustling and trying. And, and it's like doing, 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 thinking, 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 pushing, 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 and nothing is working. Right. And we get aggravated and frustrated and angry and all of that. So I speak to the women in here, right? Uh, we have tried to do things the masculine way for so long, right? Like, and, and a lot of it is conditioning. A lot of it is what we've heard to do. A lot of it is what we've seen to do. A lot of it is what we've been taught to do. So it's not like completely just our fault, you know, but we have tried to do things the masculine way for so freaking long. And we have neglected and suppressed our feminine features, our feminine natures for far too long. And I feel like 
I know for me, that was not working out for me for a very long time. And I feel like that was kind of the missing piece because I was trying to prove myself. I was trying to push. I was trying to try. <laughs> I was trying. That was the problem, right? And I was just repressing a lot of my feminine nature, but I didn't even realize I was doing this. And that's the problem. Most of us don't even realize that we are doing this, right? And so I was basically, you know, constantly trying to prove myself. And I was constantly trying to try. I was constantly pushing. And for many of us, this is against our nature, right? Like, and I know not all women will resonate with, with being super feminine, but we all have that feminine energy within us. And we all repress that feminine energy so often. And so what I've really kind of come to realize is we get to this place where we start wondering, like, what's wrong with us? You know, like, what's wrong with me? Why is this happening to me? You know, and, and we start really just questioning things. We start questioning everything. We start feeling lost within ourselves. We start attracting relationships where we are like taking care of people all the time. We start attracting relationships where it's like, we are the ones with the passion or the ambition or the, the, the ones kind of leading the way where we attract relationships where they are just broken and wounded. And, you know, we feel like we have to fix them or we attract friendships relationships, jobs, whatever, that are also mirroring this unbalanced, you know, masculine or feminine, uh, these unbalanced masculine or feminine qualities. Like if we are embracing the masculine too much or trying to be in this like masculine energy too much and it's unbalanced, then we start attracting things outside of us that are also unbalanced, right? And so and then we keep thinking like, why does this keep happening? Why do I keep attracting this kind of person? Why do I keep attracting this kind of situation? Why do I keep attracting this kind of job? Why do I keep attracting these kinds of friends? Why do, why do people keep leaving me? Why do, why do people keep doing this? Right? Like it's, it's, we just kind of do the same thing. We get stuck in this kind of like pattern. Right. And so I feel like most of our issues root back to this unbalance or this imbalance. Right. And and as I have experienced the, the balanced state of these two energies this year, it's been like bliss. Like I've never felt like more myself when I experienced the balanced state of these two energies within myself. And so, so often, you know, we want more masculine men. We want men that respect us and treat us right, but that also like have ambition and have confidence and do the things and take care of things and find the solutions and take action and, and, you know, protect us and defend us and, you know, these kinds of things, but we're also trying, but we're also so conditioned to be in this masculine energy because of the conditioning and the imbalances in our current real world right now. And so I want to remind you that feminine energy is beautiful that feminine energy women in general are bad asses okay feminine energy is the creatress the alchemizer she transforms everything that moves through her okay a woman's body is used to transmute to alchemize and then bring it into the physical a woman's body is a manifestation fucking portal and when you really start understanding this, when you really start grasping it, like I have begun to start realizing that this, you know, what, whatever you believe about the Bible and religion and all of that, but I actually kind of have this theory that the story of Adam and Eve and the apple and the snake, feminine energy, feminine energy is literally the key to our inner high priestess that has all of the answers and that is connected to everything. Right. And so that's just my theory, though. But I really think that that's true. And snakes are very feminine. Right. Just like cats and, you know, like snakes are very feminine. And so <clears throat> I feel like when you come to understand this, you realize that everything is about embodiment. OK, so we are so disconnected from our bodies, though, in today's world. Right. Um we're so disconnected from our bodies, but it's crazy because, and this is another way that the feminine is, is so repressed, but our bodies are literally portals. Our bodies 
are just as powerful as our minds. Like there is so much scientific research being done on how the gut, the heart is like, it's like has its own mind, right? And so for a while on my journey, I was stuck on my personal development journey. I felt good, but I kind of desired desire to go farther. It felt like I kind of hit, like hit this weird invisible ceiling or something. And, and so I realized though, eventually that I was playing it safe and that really all my answers were right in front of me, but I didn't see them for a while. And I don't know about you. And I don't know about every other person on the internet and the spirituality community here, but I eat, breathe and live spirituality. Like when I talk about these things, it is because I've truly integrated experienced like everything about my life, every single day of my life. I am doing something, becoming aware of something, becoming more aware of myself. Like this is my life. Like I take it so fucking seriously. And it is so like, it means so freaking much to me. Like, I don't know who I would be without my spiritual beliefs, without the different things that the the different tools and methods and experiences that I've had in spirituality. I truly take it so seriously. And I become more and more aware of myself through spirituality, astrology, all of these different personal development methods. And so anytime I talk about something, it is because I have experienced it. It It is because I am doing the work on myself. And at times that gets difficult because doing the work on myself while also helping others and you know, doing my content and things like that gets difficult at times because I'm also working on myself a lot, all the time, right? So I had reached this point though, where I had felt kind of stuck or like I had reached this weird limit and I wasn't sure what was happening. And then I finally realized that what it was, what was happening was that I was avoiding things. Like I had places in my life where I was out of my power basically. And what do I mean by that? I had places in my life where I would get small, where I would shrink, where I would tell myself, oh, I can't handle that. That's too much for me. Oh, uh, that I can't deal with that. That is stressful. That would be so stressful. I cannot deal with that. I had places in my life where I was not seeing my power where I felt like something else or someone else or some something outside of me was too much or had more power than I did or was too, was more than I could handle. And I would shrink, I would get small, I would avoid, I would procrastinate, I would ignore, I would push aside. And for a while that worked. I was able to like be very confident and I had faced so many things already, but There were just some things that I didn't even realize. It was like, it didn't even occur to me that I was doing this, right? And so (laughs) it's kind of like a person in your life. It's like, you know, I'm sure you guys have all had this experience before where there's like a person in your life when they come around or when they walk into a room or even if they're mad or angry or they have this kind of energy about them and something about you and like shrinks inside a little bit something about you gets kind of small and you may soften your voice a little bit or you may play a little bit more naive or innocent, right? But we do that with situations and things too. Like, oh, that bill that I can pay that I've been meaning to pay, but uh, I'll just put it off for now. I can't can't deal with that. That's too difficult. The, the analogy that I've used a lot, like, the dishes, you know, oh, there's a full sink of dishes. That's too difficult. I didn't come in here to deal with that. Can't deal with that right now. You know, that person I owe money to or that thing I was supposed to do or that errand or going to the store, going to the freaking grocery store. Oh my God. It's these like little tiny fucking ways, right? And I'm gonna explain why this is so important in a second. Okay, so just bear with me here. So it is these tiny little ways that, and some of them are big ways. Some of them are things from the past that we try to forget. Some of them are people in our lives that no longer feel aligned, but for whatever reason, we just keep letting them be there, you know? 
It is the boss that is disrespectful. It is the job that is sucking our soul. It is the friend that always makes it all about them and we just get quiet and don't say anything. It is all the ways where we shrink, where we take a step back, where we freeze, where we kind of ignore, where we push off, push to the side. So things that we've been neglecting because they are stressful or we're afraid of how they're going to make us feel if we deal with them, if we face them. Like, oh my gosh, that's just, I know that that's gonna make me feel weird and or stressed out or in a bad mood or whatever. So I'm just gonna put that off for now. Act like I didn't remember that or act like I didn't see that, right? So it's the lack. When we do this, when we close ourselves off, when we are not facing things, it builds this sense of lack within ourselves. And that lack compiles after a while. And what happens is it causes energetic debt. Energetic debt. And that energetic debt is like a whirlwind of a portal that just sucks at us without us even realizing it. it starts like sucking from us, sucking from our energy. But let me tell you something. <laughs> I literally find so much comfort, and I really believe that you can too, in dealing with those things when you finally do. And when I finally did, I would find comfort in the fact of like what facing those things, what dealing with those situations would do for me and who I would become by doing that, how it would help me become who I am supposed to more confident, more sure of myself. I would feel more responsible. I would feel like a mature fucking adult. I would feel like, okay, like I can handle things. Wow. Right. And I would remind myself in these times when I would go to face these things or do these little things that I don't want to deal with, I can handle this. It's really not that serious. It's really not the end of the world. I can handle this. I can handle these things. Right. I would remind myself of my inner power. So, so much of the time, the reason that this is important, you guys, because this is one of the biggest freaking lessons that I have learned in 2022. If you want to manifest, if you want to step into your power, if you want to see what you're really fucking capable of, if you want to manifest at rapid freaking speed, if you want to step into your future self, like freaking collapse time, all the shit, right? If you want to manifest faster, you have to clean up your shit. And we think backwards, like we think so freaking backwards. We think once I have my manifestation or once I get to X or once I am more X or once I get this thing or once this happens, then I will clean up myself and my life and these things, I will be the person I want to be and all will be well. And this is why I think so much of the time when we start the year, that energy fades because we haven't cleaned up our shit. And this is ass backwards. This is not about, I'm going to wait until X, Y, Z, one, two, three, four. This is about, I'm going to be now. I'm going to do these things now because if you're man, if, if, okay, whatever it is that you desire, if you don't already have it, there's a lack of it for a reason. It doesn't mean that you don't deserve it. It does not mean that you cannot have it. In fact, it's the very opposite. If you desire something, there's a reason for that. And we're going to go into that more in a minute too. But there is something, there's some reason that it's not in your life already. And that is something to do with something going on in your energy, inside of you. That is something to do with something that you don't believe. Maybe you don't believe you're worth it. Maybe you don't believe you deserve it. Maybe you have certain beliefs that it's like, if it would come in, it would just crash your whole belief system. And you go through this massive ego death and it would be like, oh my God, this is not what I wanted. You know, like it, like, there are certain things 
that are creating energetic blockages. And these places of lack that I was talking about create these energetic blockages. Because what we don't realize is that when we are putting things off and avoiding things and not facing things and those things that we don't feel good about, like we think about them occasionally, you know, like, oh yeah, I was supposed to do that. Or, oh yeah, I should do that. But no, like I can't right now. I can't deal with that right now. I'm too stressed. I got this. I got that. I got this. Like, yeah, sometimes there are reasons we can't. But if it keeps coming up and you know deep down that you can, and this is where you have to get really fucking real with yourself, you know deep down that you can do it, then that's the problem. Because when we put shit off, when we do that, we are basically denying our power. And what the the message that we give to ourselves when we do these things is, I'm not capable of that. I'm not confident enough for that. I don't have the capacity to be able to deal with that. What are you saying to yourself when you're constantly saying, I can't handle that little bit of laundry today. I can't go run that errand today. I can't deal with that. I would never be able to, to do that. I wouldn't, if you're always saying these things to yourself, how do you really think that's going to affect how you view yourself, right? These stories that we tell ourselves about what we think we can't do or can't handle affect us and affect our confidence and affect how we feel about ourselves. And it's really all an illusion because none of it's fucking true. Because you have more power than you can even imagine. And when we tell ourselves that we can't deal with these little everyday things that we can, and sometimes they're not little everyday things, okay? Sometimes they are bigger things, okay? Like I said, sometimes they are like really dirty secrets from the past that we're just like, ooh. And sometimes it's not necessarily about exposing the secret or doing something big and crazy and telling the whole world about it. I mean, sometimes it is, it just depends on what feels right for you, but sometimes it's just about facing the feelings that are attached to it that you don't wanna deal with, right? So, so much of our time, we are giving our power away to the manifestation, to what we desire itself, rather than being that person now, cleaning up those things now. Because you saying, once I have what I desire, then I will deal with all of these other things in my life that I know I should be dealing with, but I feel like I can't, right? So then once we do that, we're saying that we can't do anything until the manifestation comes. So everything is dependent on the manifestation coming because I am a victim and I have no power and none of it is me. And it's all up to this thing to happen, to make me happy because I have no power or control over my own happiness, which is bull fucking shit, <laughs> bullshit. So why I'm bringing this up is because what I have really learned this year when it comes to manifestation, manifesting at quantum fucking levels is that we think we need to be at a certain level. We think we need to be at a certain level to be, do, have things, etc. cetera. But that is not true. And I know I was like this too. I was always waiting on my circumstances to change, my fucking circumstances, right? The, the money, the car, the job, the person, the fucking whatever, right? And it was bullshit. I was giving my power away to my circumstances. And so what really, what really happens with manifestation is that you don't wait around to be at a certain level, to then be the person that makes those changes, no. You be the person that makes those changes now, right now. Again, embodiment, the feminine. Everything is about embodiment first, everything. If you aren't embodied in it, then how do you attract it, right? How do you attract it? The feminine magnetizes, right? Where the masculine chases. And so the feminine is about the being because when you be, you magnetize, you attract. So the successes in your life 
the things that did happen in your life, the, the successes in your life, the things that did come true in your life, they weren't about what you did. It may seem that way, but this is where we're so backwards. We're so used to looking at the world through this masculine in, lens where it's all about doing. I have to do, I have to work harder, but you can work hard all day long. And there's people that work hard their whole lives and don't hardly have anything for it, right? So that's obviously not the answer. We're the only answer. I mean, for some some people, they can work hard and achieve some, right? Like, so I'm not saying that it's completely not right, but it's not the answer for many people, I believe, in this world or else the world would be very different. So the successes in your life were not about what you did. They were about who you were being at that time. Who you were being, what you were embodied in at that time. Have you ever went through a dark night of the soul or something like it, right? Whatever you want to call it. A, a time period that was so difficult, that was so dark, that was so heart-wrenching, that was like emotionally just chaotic, that was just insane where all these bad things were happening like one after another, after another, after another. And you were just like, oh my God, what is happening right now? Like you really didn't think you were going to make it through it. And it was so scary. And you were like, oh my gosh. And then something shifts something shifts inside of you where you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Something just kind of clicks. Something just kind of happens where you just go through this magical kind of shift and it can happen really quickly and out of nowhere, like just right before you know it. Right. And the next thing, you know, it's like you finally feel something. And so you, so you finally like just surrender or something. Maybe you accept something or you surrender something or you say, fuck it. Or you just, you know, you finally do something that you felt you needed to do that changed within you. Right. And then boom, everything starts changing. Like everything in your life starts changing. That's happened to me so many times throughout my life where I go through a profound internal shift and then everything in my life reflects that everything starts opening up, everything starts changing. This is manifestation. It is all about embodiment. So when I am in my power, things just come to me. Like it's, it's easy. Things are simple. I see things so much differently when I'm in my power. When I'm not in my power, I see things from a very victimhood place. Like I see things from a very overwhelmed, I can't do this. Life is too much. I don't know if I could do that. I can't handle this. I don't know what's going to happen. It's like everything else has the control but me, right? Everything else is just kind of dictating my life. It's like I'm a leaf just, you know, getting blown wherever, right? When I'm in my power, it's very different. I'm in the driver's seat of my life, but I'm also in the flow with life at the same time. And when you start stepping into your power, you get to a place where you're not attracted to the same things anymore. You're not drawn to the same things anymore. And it's actually hot. <laughs> you start getting to a place where you're actually attracted and drawn to maturity, where you're drawn to other people that are in their power. You're not drawn to friends that don't listen to you or ditch you all the time. You're not drawn to immaturity. You're not drawn to the fuck boys or the wounded soul or the, the person you feel like you need to fix, you know, like those that avoid their problems all the time or those that you think you can like mother and, and help them find some kind of whatever. Like you're not drawn to that anymore because you've already done all that stuff for yourself and you've already been there, done that and you already know, right? So you start seeing your worth and you start hiring your standards. And this is crucial. Hiring your standards is crucial. And if you're one of my clients, then you know, hello, <laughs> you know about hiring the standards, baby, because that is something I'm very, 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 very big about that has contributed immensely to my growth and upgrades and all of that this year, okay? Other than inner power. That's like, Inner power is the first step. 
Okay. So we have to, we got to talk about that because that is literally the first step. That, that is always the first step in any journey of mine is like, oh shit, I have a lot more power than I think I do. And then from there, it just keeps going. So, and it's a little more than that. We're going to talk about that too. It's a little more than just like, oh shit, I have a lot more power than I think I do. What happens is I get so sick of the bullshit and I stop blaming everything else and everybody else and making excuses and yada, 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 and getting caught up in all the overwhelm and the chaos and the drama of it all, my own, you know, all of my drama. And I'm finally like, you know what? No, I'm going to take accountability of of this. I'm going to take responsibility of this. I'm going to see my part in this. And then boom, right? You get to a place where you're so done with the bullshit, or maybe you're backed into a corner and you're just like, you know, I'm not going to keep pushing this off on everything else anymore because no one's coming to save me. Nothing else is working. My circumstances aren't going to change, right? Like I am the one in power over my circumstances, not the other way around. Right. And yeah, there are some things you can't control. You can't control other people's actions and how they come across to you and things like that. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the things in your life that you do have power over that maybe you're not wanting to see that you have power over. So this is stepping into womanhood. This is womanhood and it's beautiful. For the first time in my life ever this year, just this year, I started experiencing glimpses of it last year, like phases of it, short phases of it last year. But I would say this year is the year where I have truly understood on very profound and deep levels what womanhood really fucking is and how beautiful and powerful womanhood is. It truly is miraculous. It truly is powerful. I used to look at maturity as this kind of gross thing. <laughs> I used to look at maturity and responsibility and structure as kind of this gross thing, right? Like my North nodes in Capricorn. So like, yeah, hello, but, <laughs> but you know, it's what I'm here to learn. So now I'm kind of like, oh my God, this is the shit. It is so attractive to me. It is so attractive to me because of the work that I've done on myself. And I feel so much more clean and, and clear within myself because of this. And I feel like it's just sexy, you know, like it's just sexy. It is so sexy to see someone like take their power back and be in their power. It is so sexy to be embodied in that power. And to be and to, to be able to be in that balance between your feminine and masculine, to be able to, to receive and lean back and be in pleasure and bliss and wild with your feminine energy, but also to be able to be ambitious and take action and do the things that you need to do with your masculine energy. And so womanhood is a beautiful thing. Now, back to standards. When we begin to really step into our power, which I'm going to give you a bunch of things to journal about, like journal prompts and all of that, like we are going to be like, we're going to be like reconstructing ourselves and everything for the year ahead in just a minute. So just bear with me. But when you really start taking control of your life back, when you start stepping into your inner power, you start hiring your standards like massively. And you realize that you teach people how to treat you by how you treat yourself. Everything is a mirror of your relationship with you. And this is why it always goes back to embodiment, 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 embodiment. If you have a shitty relationship with yourself, you're probably going to have some type of shitty relationship with other people to some degree on some level, right? May not be like the whole relationship is shitty, but you know, if you are always neglecting yourself, you may have relationships where people seem to neglect you. They don't want to listen to you. They don't, they don't hear you out. They don't, et cetera, et cetera, right? So how you treat yourself when you are in the, when you are in the room with a woman that is confident in herself, that is in her power. She does not need to prove to you that she is in her power. You just feel it. You can just tell the vibes are there. When you are in the room with a woman who is confident in herself, 
are you likely to go up and disrespect her, right? Unless maybe you're triggered by her. But it's likely not going to be as likely. It's likely not going to be as likely. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to be unlikely a little bit more. People can feel that, whether they realize it or not, whether they're aware of it or not. When you have a good relationship with yourself and you have good standards for yourself and you enter into connections and into some kind of relationship with the outside world, that is going to be reflected back to you because you're not going to allow certain things. You're not going to put up with certain things. You're going to show the standard. You're, you are the standard by how you are embodied. You literally become the fucking standard. You become confidence. You become boundaries. You become accountability. You become power. You become respect. You become your fucking standards. And other people feel that. You become what you allow and what you don't allow. It's just there. You're embodied in it. So here are some of the questions I want you to really reflect on before the end of this year. Because this is about now. This is not about later. This is not about next year, I'll do it. <laughs> and then it ends. And then it's like next year, I'll do it, right? We want to hold that energy. We want to like really get to the bottom of these things and start becoming now, embodying now and facing shit now, stepping into our power now. So when the new year comes, that's just momentum that's already added to our fuel, right? So here's what I want you to ask yourself. And, and actually, before we go any farther, is this making sense? Can you let me know in the chat? Are you feeling this? Is this making sense? Is this resonating? What are you thinking so far? Just catching up on your comments here. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yay, I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, great. I am so freaking excited. That That makes me so happy. Um, okay. So what I thank you guys. I'm so happy because <laughs> I, I just didn't know if everyone was going to be ready for this or not. So I just, I wanted to, to check in. So when it comes to your personal power, this is the question that you really need to ask yourself to like figure out where you're not in your power, where you're slacking, all that, and get back into your power, right? So the question that you want to ask yourself is, and you may want to write these things down, how are you playing a part in your issues or the way that your life is? Where is your part in this? How are you playing a part in this, right? This is not to say that it's all your fault. This is not about blaming. This is not about like making yourself feel bad about yourself, but only from, only from the perspective of seeing your part in it, can you actually do something about it? Because if it's always something else, someone else, something outside of you, then you're not seeing your part, right? And there is a saying, and recovery that I love. And this saying is that if you are not the problem, there is no solution. And I love that saying because it's true. Sometimes I hate it when I don't want to take responsibility or accountability <laughs> for my part in things. But like I said, at first it can be uncomfortable, like facing like, okay, yeah, it kind of is on me that I am where I'm at in my life right now to some extent, you know, like, yeah, there were maybe some things out of your control, but you got to let those go. If you don't have power over those, then why are you hanging on to them? Why are you still bitching about them? Why are you still attached to them? Right? So let that shit go. Focus on the shit that you are playing a part that you do have control over that you may not want to admit, or you may not like to see. And this is where you have to get 
really freaking real with yourself. So how are you playing a part in your issues? Because this is what's going to change everything. When you finally accept that, like I said, at first it may not feel good, but when you finally accept that, everything begins to change. And I know for me, like one of my biggest affirmations, I've, I said this recently in a video on my channel, but one of my favorite affirmations, I used to say it in goddess mode all the time too, is that when I take responsibility for my world, my world changes, right? So when I'm no longer putting the responsibility for my world on, onto other people or, you know, the universe just hates me or whatever, when I stop doing that, I say, you know what? It's my responsibility. My happiness is my responsibility. My emotions are my responsibility. My mind is my responsibility. My actions are my responsibility, right? My life is my responsibility. When I put that in my hands, everything changes because from there I become in control again. That's the beautiful part. And that's what we really are running from in the first place when we're not taking control when we're not in our power we don't want to admit that it's on us because we're scared we're scared we're scared because if it's on us then that means i gotta do something about it <laughs> but suck up buttercup because who better to do something about it than you you know there's so many ways of looking at this right there's so many ways of looking at this so the next question, what are you avoiding or neglecting? However you want to put it. What are you avoiding or, or neglecting in your life? Or what have you been avoiding or neglecting this year that has maybe come up? You know, it could be something from the past that's come up a lot in your mind this year. Like, ooh, I still really feel not great about that situation. Or, ooh, I really like kind of did that person wrong and I just, I don't feel good about it. Or oh, I never, I never did that thing I was supposed to do that I said I was going to do. I feel bad about it. So what are you avoiding? The next thing, take accountability and responsibility. This is where you take your power back. This is where everything changes and you go from victim to the creatress, okay? Where you go from everything's, everybody else's fault and I'm just so helpless and I can't do it and everyone hates me and the world is out to get me and I'm so overwhelmed to you know what no I'm the fucking creatress like point blank enough said on period <laughs> etc we have to take radical responsibility for our life and this is how you take your confidence back and realize who the fuck you really are and what you're really capable of. Because all those ways that you're not in your power, all those ways that you're avoiding, all of the, the ways that you tell yourself you can't handle something, those are eating away at your self-confidence. Those are eating away at your leadership. Those are eating away at your self-esteem in subconscious ways, even when they're small. So now that is the inner power work. This is the 2022-2023 work, which the inner power work leads into that. So I want to say it's just as important because without that, you're not cleaning up the shit, right? Like I said, so many people are like, oh, once I get what I desire, then I will do X, Y, Z. But like, it's not like that. That's ass backwards. It's like, no, you do X, Y, Z, you become now, you become that person, right? Like, so for instance, like this year, I wanted to manifest big success in my business. I wanted to have an excess, successful launch for goddess mode and all of this different stuff, right? And so that was partly what I was manifesting back earlier in the beginning of the year when I was doing all of this inner power work. And I realized, okay, how can I teach other people how to step into their goddess energy when I still have a few things in my life that I am not in my power in? How is that? How is that clean? How does that feel right to me? It didn't feel right to me. So I had to do the work, right? I had to step into that energy. I had to step into being the one that was clean energetically that could hold 
something as big as what I was trying to do with goddess mode. I had to do all of those things. I had to be embodied in that. I had to be that woman. I had to be that success beforehand, before it even happened, before I even knew if it would work, before I even knew if, if goddess mode would like end up being successful, which it did <laughs> really freaking did. And so I had to do all that stuff though, beforehand. I had to do, I had to, to practice all those lessons. I had to become the teacher of the program that I wanted it to be. What I was manifesting, I had to become that and not just like, oh yeah, I hope this works, but I'm not going to change anything about myself. You know, I'm not going to become the person that's a match to something like that and that's what it's all about who you be is everything what you're embodied in is everything and this is where the inner power works work comes in because this is such a key ingredient to that sh internal shift so i want you to take personal inventory of your 2022 where did you succeed what were your successes right? What did you accomplish? Like, what did you overcome? Like, what, where did you succeed? And I want you to write those down. And if, if you can't even like celebrate yourself, which I mean, of course you can, but like celebrate those fucking successes. Like that's a fucking big deal. You know, even if it seems small, it's a big fucking deal because you're a big deal. Again, standards, right? The next thing, what did you learn in 2022? What were the lessons that you learned this year? And I want you to like really reflect. We're literally taking an inventory right now. And this is for a reason, right? So what did you learn? What lessons did you learn? And after that, what lessons can you start implementing now if you haven't, right? Because we can learn lessons. We can learn that our ex is a filthy lying cheater or something, you know, but it does not mean that we are not thinking about getting back with him. So things like that, right? And again, inner power work, confidence work, because once you do enough of it, you're like, that's not even attractive to me anymore. Hmm. Interesting. You start attracting different kinds of people and you're like, wow, hmm, didn't know I could be treated like this. <laughs> you know, like things start shifting. So, and those were just examples, guys. Like, you know, I'm not saying for sure you guys have that going on or anything or that I have that going on or anything. I'm just saying just an example, random example <laughs> just popped up. But anyway, so how can you take the next question? How can you take what you've learned in 2022 and move forward with it in 2023, which kind of goes into the, how can you start implementing these lessons now if you haven't already, right? Yes, uh, Lanny, Lanny, I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> I'm not sure which way that you pronounce it, but hell fucking yes, that is definitely something to celebrate over. I literally said earlier today that I am not attracted to red flags anymore. Lainey. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that name, but, um, that is freaking awesome. That is badass. Like hell yes, sister. I feel you. That is amazing. So and two ways. So back to the inventory. So how can you take what you've learned and move forward with it in 2023? The next thing, what do you still need to work on? So this is where it's like, okay, what other challenges either within myself or my life do I still need to work on? Do I still have a really negative self-talk? Do I still have these limiting beliefs about myself, right? Like what in me? And if it's an external situation, like finances, your job, a friendship, a relationship, whatever, then this is good. If it's an external situation, you want to bring it back to the embodiment. Okay. So what's my part in this situation and 
what would the version of me that has, you know, X, right? Like, so let's say you have a shitty job and you're like, I literally like this job is, you know, just soul sucking. And I can't like, it's, I, I need to work on figuring this situation out. So you would say, okay, so what traits in me are clinging to this job or holding me in this job? What are the like, quote unquote, negative traits, you know, within me that I need to work on that is my part in this job situation, right? And then you would do something like, okay, once I work on those traits, who would I become? Who would I become and what would I do without those traits? And how can I start being her now? How can I start embodying her now, embodying the woman that loves her job, that has an amazing job? Does it mean that you're going to automatically fall in love with your job now? That could be a possibility, but you could be manifesting a new job. You could be, there could be tons of different things that happen, but you start embodying those traits of that new you now, and you start cleaning up the old traits of, you know, you that's, that's clinging to this now, right? So, and again, none of this is to be like, oh, this is because you're a failure and, you know, yada, 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 because failure doesn't even exist. Like failure is literally in the mind, right? It like, we decide what is failure and what isn't. We are the ones that tell ourselves this was a failure, this wasn't. This worked, this wasn't, right? So it, it's basically all up to us because failure is made up. It is a made up concept. Okay. <laughs> it is literally a made up concept. Like we can literally go through a situation. Someone could have went through that exact same experience and like not considered it a failure. Right. Because really everything is just an experience and a failure is up to you. It is up to what you're labeling it. It is up to what you want to call it. If you want to call it a failure and look at it as a failure and make it mean something about you, you can do that. But if you want to look at it as just an experience and you learned something from it and now you're moving on or it led to something else, which it would have never done if you wouldn't have went through that. Like there's so many ways that you can look at it, right? So failure is bullshit. So we need to, you know, stop trying to beat ourselves down with the failure hammer here. Okay. <laughs> but so I really feel like, you know, with this inventory, what we're really trying to do here is really gauge who we were in 2022 and what was like helpful about that, like what helped us achieve certain things with those behaviors, with those traits and what was working against us, where we want to improve, right? And it's, again, this is not to be like, you're a bad person and you suck. And, you know, this is not to beat yourself over the head with. This is just to take an honest inventory and say, okay, like what were the harder parts for me? And what are the traits or the behaviors or the thoughts, the stories that I tell myself that are still kind of like, you know, that I'm still attached to. And I want you to begin to make a plan on how you're going to like work through these right? I want you to begin to start embodying the opposite. And how do you do that? You have to make a plan to, again, all the things with the inner power work, but also you have to make a plan on and, and start creating new standards for yourself within that plan on how am I going to recreate myself? How am I going to move past these stories? When this story comes up, am I going to succumb to it? Am I going to believe it? Or what am I going to do? I'm going to like, oh, that's interesting that I think that about myself. I'm going to become more aware of it, right? And then I'm going to start asking that story questions and maybe start trying to figure out why it's a lie, why it's not true and start telling myself why the opposite of that story could also be true. So for instance, if I'm always telling myself, oh, I'm never going to succeed. I'm never going to succeed. I'm never going to succeed. Then maybe I like start uh, becoming aware of that and just observing that instead of attaching to it and just being like, huh, I wonder why, why wouldn't I succeed? 
oh, well, because you just, you just won't. Okay, but why? Oh, well, because everybody else does, but you don't. Oh, well, then if, if, if everybody else does, then doesn't that show me that it's possible? So why wouldn't I? Right. Like you just keep kind of questioning it. And then you're like, okay, well, you know, how is it that I could succeed though? Is that really true that I won't succeed? And how is it that I could succeed? What is true about me possibly succeeding? So who do you want to be in 2023? Right. This is what we're crafting. Who do you want to be in 2023? And how can you start embodying that now? How can you make 2023 the era of you, your era, where you come alive, where you allow your best self out, where you allow all your favorite traits about you out, where you allow yourself to be totally authentically you, where you embrace who you really are, where you embody all of the the desires within you, all of the things that you desire within you, where you embody your next level. And your next level comes from you shedding what's no longer aligned with you at this level now. So it's not that you're trying to embrace something that you're not. It's not that you're trying to be something that you're not. You already are this next level. It's about shedding what's no longer aligned with this level now. So if you have old stories, old limiting beliefs, those aren't you. That's not who you really are. If you have old fears, old traumas, that's not who you really are, right? And those things can be difficult to get rid of at times because sometimes we're attached to them, right? We've built our identity around them. I built my identity for so long around being this like dark, edgy, mysterious, like whatever, <laughs> you know, like I'm so dark and yada whatever but like it's this year I've like worked on shedding a lot of that right because it's like yeah like I do have this love and fascination for the dark but I'm not all dark and that's okay and I don't have to constantly be focused on the dark or the negative or the the whatever right I don't have to constantly be you know focused on that stuff to feel like I'm being authentic to myself or something, you know, like it, it just became something that it didn't need to be anymore. That wasn't aligned anymore. So the next thing I want to talk about is that when it comes to really stepping into what you're, what you desire, it comes down to really living in the future and the present at the same time, right? So you're kind of embodying this up level of you, this new level of you. You're like aligning with the future you now, right? You're becoming her now. You're saying, this is happening now. I'm doing this now. I'm taking my power back now. I'm done, you know, putting this off now. I'm done feeding all of these insecurities I have now. I'm done, like you're doing it all now. You're making it all happen right now. So you're literally drawing a line in the fucking sand, right? So you you're aligning with the future you basically. And so we are always kind of in the in-between, like one foot in, that, in the now and one foot in the future with what we want to create, right? And this is why we always want more. <laughs> but this is also why we, because we wanna create, but this is also why we have to learn to enjoy the now, right? So sometimes it's not about what you wanna create in the future, it's about being it now right? And enjoying it now, being so in it and embodying it so much right now that it doesn't matter what your 3D reality is telling you because you're in it. You are it, right? You are it. So <clears throat> that is the power of feminine energy. So when we desire new experiences, if those experiences weren't supposed to be lived by you, then why would the desire be there in the first place? right? Like your desire desires you too. Like it's a mutual connection. <laughs> it's like a magnet. So not everyone has the same desires as you do. So there's a reason that you have those desires. So we have to start being now. The being is everything. So who do you desire to be in the new year? Be this now, not later, right? So Something else that really helps me step into everything, like when I'm like, okay, this is happening, I'm stepping in my power, I'm taking my power back, 
I'm in the now, but I'm also like have this weird connection with the future, but I'm also like in the now and just letting it go because I'm not going to let it have power over my right now. Right. But I also step into, okay, how do I want to start dressing now? Right. How does this new me dress? What standards does she have? What does she do with her time? What are her routines? Right. What's important to her? What does she value? And then you start making decisions from the you that you desire to be, from that you, right? You start making decisions from that you that you are becoming. The you that already has achieved your desires. And this is how you begin to collapse timelines. And so you get to ask yourself, in every situation, who do I want to be, right? Who do I want to be? And this is very, very powerful because you can be the old you that's gonna like, you know, possibly react. Hold on, someone's not on mute. Okay, there we go. <laughs> You can be the old you that's possibly going to react to a bunch of things or that's possibly going to like, you know, get back into your old stories, get back into your old insecurities, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or you can be the new you. And this is where you make those decisions, you know, like in those different moments, it's like, okay, I can go back to being this person that's like out of my power, insecure, freaking out, yada, yada, yada. Or I can like, how would... How would the me and her confidence and like already knows what's up? Like, how would she react in this situation? Right. So <clears throat> with that being said, the last thing that I really wanted to talk about is that women and feminine energy is literally a magnet. Like we are magnets for what we desire when we are in our feminine, when we are in our healthy, balanced feminine. Feminine energy attracts, right? Like I said. So when you are in that power of that, everything is so magnetic and you're so like, you're literally like flirting with life and you're literally like just high on life and it's beautiful. And so I personally feel like feminine energy is the key to so, so much. It is the key to kind of unlocking so much because that's how it has been for me, right? And I know that's been that way for many of my clients <laughs> because we live in such an unbalanced world. And that's why I did goddess mode this year, all about like stepping into your power, embracing your feminine energy, all of that. But, and this is where I'm going to talk about what I wanted to talk about at the end of this class. And that is, and you probably, you may have seen me talk about it on some of my other platforms, but my newest program, Manifest Her, starts tomorrow. And this is my signature manifestation program, all about a lot of the manifestation stuff that we talked in here, but a lot deeper, a lot more detailed. Like these were the things that I talked about in here were, powerful, powerful ingredients that I feel like everybody should know before you enter this program, basically, right? So I am so freaking excited <laughs> about this program because I've been waiting to do it. Like I've been creating it all year. I've been creating it since like before even goddess mode. Like I got the idea for manifest her before I even came out with goddess mode. I was still creating goddess mode when manifest her came. And so, but it is all about quantum manifestation and becoming the creatress of your life. I don't know why I was like trying to somehow say that all together at once. And it like, just wasn't coming out at the same time, but anyway, so you will learn basically how to manifest at quantum levels, higher levels to completely alter your reality, to magnetize what you desire while falling in love with your power and who you are and your confidence. And so this program will hold you like every step of the way on manifestation. It's only a month long and I've decided to keep it at the price that it's at right now uh, until probably Saturday. It's probably going to go up Saturday, but there are different payment plan options. So if you, 
you know, it, it, whatever your situation is, you know, there's, there's probably a payment plan option that will suit you. So I feel like this program is going to be so much fun <laughs> and it is so perfect because it is happening in December. And so it's like taking everything we talked about in this masterclass and amplifying it and adding to it and like compacting it. And you're actually going to like do all the things, right? And you're going to be led through all of the things and you're going to fall back in love with life and yourself and manifestation and create like just being a creator and life and like feeling like the bliss and like the juiciness of life and going into the new year like that. You know what I mean? So I feel like that is super fucking powerful. And so anyway, I am so freaking excited for this program. And let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. It's going to be a month long, like I said, and it's going to show you as well, like how divine you are. Like, like it will show you that you are the freaking creator, that you are the creatress of your reality and how to use your body to manifest, how to use feminine energy to manifest, feminine energy and masculine energy to manifest at quantum levels. And so we're going to be going over the energetics of it. We're going to be going over the physical part of it. We're going to be going over all of it. Okay. And so I've been like downloading, practicing, living these methods all year long. And I'm just so excited. I just, every time, you know, something would happen or I'd experience something new, I would just add to it. And so I'm so excited, but we're going to jam pack it in, in like a month and the holidays are coming. So it'll probably go into the new year a little bit, but I am super excited for it. So I'm going to share the link if you are interested in manifest her. Uh, and if not, that is fine. I know it's not going to be for everybody, but I do hope that even whether you are or you aren't, that this masterclass was helpful for you and that you got something from this and that you feel a little bit more like a badass coming out of this masterclass <laughs> and ready to kind of end this year and go into the next, because I know we haven't even like ended this year yet, you know? And so, but I feel like, you know, we're, we're coming up on that ending. And I felt like this was the perfect fucking time to do this class. And so, uh, because we still have some time left this year. So we still have that time to really, you know, reflect on everything that's happened and also have that excitement about the new year and be able to kind of step into our energy now as we are moving in to the year ahead, right? And and so, and that's going to, it's like we're already setting the foundation for the year ahead, you know? And so, oh my God, yes, I'm so freaking excited. I would love to have you. Uh, I think like there's so many women, I think all the women in there uh, also took goddess mode too, but you don't, you don't need to have taken goddess mode to sign up for manifest her. Like you will get everything you need and manifest her, uh, goddess mode is still good to take though, but you don't need to have, you don't need to have taken goddess mode to take manifest her. So just so you know, but, but a lot of the women in there did. <laughs> um, so anyways, so hopefully, uh, I will see you and manifest her, but if not, then I really hope that this class really gave you something that it really, you know, I don't know, sparked something in you. If you would like to share, um, about your experience here, feel free to do that. You can message me, you can post on social media, you can do whatever, you know, just make sure you tag me. And does anybody have badass bitch ready to go? Hell yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm so excited for you to answer the prompts, Tyler. Like I've, I've been doing my own reflection and those prompts have like really, really helped, helped me. Like, so, uh, but does anybody have any questions before we get off of here? You can ask in the chat or you can, um, like raise your hand and unmute yourself. Just reading your guys' comments. Yay, I'm so glad you made it too, Liz. I feel like this masterclass was very beneficial. Thank you so much. Yay, thank you, Lainey. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for being here tonight with me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so I will let you guys go. 
I hope you have an amazing rest of your night. Yay, Sarah. <laughs> and I will see you guys soon on my socials or on YouTube or in Manifest Her or wherever. But if you have any questions about Manifest Her or about anything, just reach out. You can reach out on Facebook, Instagram, email, my website, wherever, right? Okay, so I will let you guys go though. I love you. Have a beautiful rest of your evening and beautiful rest of your year year not year year <laughs> and kick ass yes the recording um the recording should be emailed if not it'll be posted in the um the quantum sheet facebook group my mind is like giving out on me right now so sorry you guys <laughs> but i will let you guys go have a beautiful night and beautiful rest of your year bye